And then I'll know where we are. Hmm. Oops. Oops. Not now. Sign in. You're you're gonna see. You're not signed in. Okay. I, I was. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Now I got it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh, let me see. Two, 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 two. <coughs> Whoops. Okay. Hi, just me. Okay, we're gonna get going. We're a little late. Oh my, it's hot here. Uh, hi, New Day Farm. Good to see you. Okay, uh, I'm gonna get a drink of water. And as you know, um, our platform has been, since it's the winter, our platform has been teaching. As you all know, I'm, I'm a teacher, was a teacher, however you wanna put it. And um, so I am putting in instructions. Hi, Andy's Backyard and Shop. Okay, and uh, whoever else is there. Okay, I got to make this bigger so I can see everybody. Okay, yes, Mr. and Mrs. Okay, so like everything else, if you all are just going to be chatting away, which we wholeheartedly uh, expect, you will have this document to go over again. Okay, I'm glad everybody's here, but I want to start. Okay, so we went over. Uh, how to be a successful beekeeper, you know, before you even think about anything, you may want that to go. Maybe not. Um, okay. I'm going to turn off your sound. Yeah. And uh, stuff like that. We went over the bee suit. We went over the different types of bees. We've gone over everything. Where are you going to put, put your bees in your yard? Okay. The whole nine yards. I wonder if I can do this. Nope. Hi, uh, Betty. Boom, boom. Oh, I can see you better down here. Hi, New Day Farm. Oh, did you? Yes, I am. Um, God love you. Your teacherness. Oh, does it? <laughs> I'm retired, <laughs> uh, New Bay. I used I was subbing up to last year, and then I stopped just to devote more time here. But I might go back next year because you know once you get the subbing bar, subbing subbing bug. I mean, I love teaching. Actually, my specialist is literacy specialist. That's my certification. Don't tell anybody that. Okay, ready. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to screen share. And like I said, you have all your previous lessons, class. So now this week, oh, where's that nice little screen share? There we go. Nope, that's not it. That's chat. There we go. Uh, application. This and share. This week is going to be installing your bees into your hive. Okay. All righty. Okay. Now you have everything. You got your bees. Okay. You got to put them in their little hives. All righty. Got to put them in there. So this week we're going to learn how to do that. Depending on what, what am I doing here? Sorry. Let me get caught up here. Yes. Just me. This is a series. This it's is a series. Um, we're a few in maybe five or yes, six. they're all yeah, they're they're that? all posted on the site on the channel. okay. Now, hold on, which way makes this what am I? You know, I keep doing that. I'm gonna learn. Okay, they're all on the channel, and anyone that has emailed <laughs> me and wants a copy, I will email it to you. Although I'm gonna be going through this and doing some edits, and then you get the whole uh session okay oh yeah this is serious just me yeah, yeah you don't have to apologize oh, no no don't apologize no, we just will, me we do Normally. not send a law enforcement officer to your house yes but there is a test i'm <laughs> just kidding <laughs> just me if you knew me folks tell her no tell her oh you don't have to watch it like that oh my goodness Tell her uh who's here that i that knows me that has been here you, uh, you can pick it up 
tonight yeah, and then go yeah. back and see part. what you're interested in. Right. Please. Um, I'll tell you right now, I'm not a serious person by any means. Okay. Not at all. I'm fun loving. I'm like, ha ah, ah, ha ah, ah, ha ah, and whatever. So this is not serious. And you know, we're just in here having a good time. Mm -hmm. All right. The swarm noise. Earplugs. Oh, you, you, it'll be music to your ears. Okay. And just me, honey, you're fine. Okay. Installing your bees into your into your hive. You got the bees now. Okay. Wherever you order your bees from, we'll usually send them early May to late June. Okay. And there's a reason for that, folks. After June, the risks go up for your bees to survive. This is because your bees will need the summer months in order to lay brood, brood is eggs, okay, and to grow into a large enough hive to survive the winter cooler weather. Install your bees on an overcast day when it is not raining. The bees must have seven straight days to orient with their newly released queen. That's if you have a pa package bee. So we'll get into that a little bit later. Okay. The queen cage sugar cork must be exposed to the other bees before they can set. And there's got to be a her in here. Okay. Her free. All right. Meaning the uh, queen. Okay. And we'll get more into that later. This is just kind of an end. In what is what? Oh, there we go. Oh, did you see what I just did? Sorry, right, folks. Because it kicked me out, so I'm over here trying. You're to, out? Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to get back in. All right. Uh, so, nukes will already have a queen who has had time to become a part of the hive. Remember that. That's one of the advantages of nukes. And remember we spoke about how when you go to get your bees, that nukes, it used to be that nukes were way more expensive than packaged bees but now they're just about the same price all right so we're the first we're going to do is installing your nuke in your beehive all right now like i said if you have questions um you feel free to ask bee man is over there manning the questions and um or are you feel free to go back well yeah the other ones are up and they're and they're all like this okay your nuke will consist of your nuke will consist, and there's not an S on there. Oh my goodness, of five frames. Okay. However, you transport your nuke, be sure to have good ventilation. Either rubber band, your lid. Oh, I rushed through this. Either rubber band the lid. Okay, because you don't want them coming off. And we're going to show you these in a minute. Rubber band the the lid of your nukes, or secure with duct tape. Period. All right. Why didn't you, uh, Mr. B? Why didn't you spell check this? <laughs> uh, it, it. <sighs> got a question? Yeah, I gotta fix it. Yeah, I'm just gonna say it. Hi, food. Um, it, it's, it, um, automatically filled in the words for me when I was responding to Biddy, so it came out screwed up. Oh, okay. Um, what I was trying to say is, you can get over the noise by trusting in your B suit. Right. Okay. Definitely. Remember, in one of the live streams we have up, I was deadly afraid of bees. Deadly. You put that bee suit on, you're like invincible. Now, you're going to have a sting here and there, maybe, but you have to trust in your bee suit. And then you have to realize that you're actually helping the bees. They're just little creatures. They don't, I mean, they're just trying to live. Everything's trying to kill them up there. You got chemicals, you got uh, colony collapse disorder, you're helping them. So you're their friend, even though they may not act like it. Kind of like raising children. You know, you love your children, you do the best for them. And they sometimes tell you, I don't like you anymore, but you're doing the best for them. Okay. Anyway, back to installing your nuke. Uh, there's no need to dress up for the first part of these steps, which is picking up your nukes. That should be your, I'm I have a habit of correcting as we go on. Uh, picking up your nukes and transporting them. Your nuke will come in a cardboard or wooden box, the wooden if shipped. Let me take off the the. Okay, folks, sorry for the editing. Okay, let's go down. And we're going to show you nukes, so don't worry. In fact, if you go back to the other lessons, you've already seen a picture of the nukes, but we're going to show you our nukes, okay, when we first began. 
When you are ready to install your bees, have all of your equipment set out, including your smoker already lit. Now, you go pick up your newts in your car. That's what we did or whatever. Okay, if you have a truck and you're gonna put it in the back, make sure they're not gonna fly off on you. Okay, and make sure that top is on. Um, and get them home and set them outside, not in the sun, all right? Then you're gonna lightly smoke the entrance of your nuke. Please be sure you're not gonna be lighting your, your smoker after <laughs> you start working with your bees, okay? One by one, I'm on six now, one by one, gently lift and place the high frames into your hive deep box. You'll see what I mean. Remember, you're gonna pick up four, five frames. Another five and you'll have a complete hive box, a D, okay? These are called nukes because, remember, they're the nucleus of a colony. They're the nucleus of a colony. There's the queen. She's already familiar with the bees. And there's some honey in there and some uh, pollen in there. And there's brood in there. So it's like one happy family being put into just a, a home, a new home. Um, one by one, gently lift and place the, the five frames into your hive deep box. Place them in the hive body carefully. This is a great time to inspect the frames and identify your queen. She will have a dot to identify her, 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 here, her, okay, her, and she will be moving, or she will be quickly moving around the frame. So be careful not to smash her once you find her. She's bigger than everybody else, folks. Also, every year there's a different color, like one year the color's yellow, one year the color's blue. That helps you, they put a dot on there, okay? And that helps you if you go into your bee yard, you see a yellow, when that's yellow, you go, well, that was last year's color, okay? All right, so you know that queen is a year old. I try to look for her now because it's going to get harder, as I think it says in here. Keep the frames in order from your nuke to the hive body, meaning as you take them out of the hive, out of your nuke, okay, and put them in your hive body, you know, don't go, oh, well, I'm going to put this one here, then put an empty frame and whatever. Put them all together. I think we put ours in the middle. I'm sorry. I, did we I'm put responding. our five? Do we put our five nukes in the middle? You always put them in the middle. In the middle. Okay. Uh, once the frame, once the once all the frames are transferred, if there are bees still in the box, just lightly tap the box and dump their remainder bees in the cardboard in the well in the box in the oops box. Okay into your hive body. Remember to really take some time to find the queen. It will not get any easier to find her. As time goes on and you build up your hive, and I mean, excuse me, and your hive builds, it's gonna be harder and harder to find her. Replace the lid on the hive body. If all of your bees do not come out of your mm -hmm. nuke, place it next to your hive and they will find their way into it. So all you're going to do is just, you know, anything, anyone that's hanging around in that cardboard box or wooden box as it, whatever, just place it right by your hive and they're going to find their way in there. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Brenda. You will only need the one D box at this time. That's all you need right now. Okay. Let your bees continue to draw out comb which means they're going to be building the foundation of a honeycomb. You've all seen honeycomb. They're going to be building honeycomb on the frames that you give them, either wax or plastic. What are the frames? Wax or? Uh, plastic with wax on Plastic them. with wax on them. Okay. They should have at least four frames finished with them working on a fifth. Okay. It won't take long for a nuke to grow six to eight frames in two to three weeks. Now that's not, you know, don't say, oh my goodness, it's been two to three weeks and we don't have six to eight frames grown. Okay. You can't go by what they say in the books. And this is from research. Okay. They should have two to three frames of brood that will be hatching soon. That's something you do want to look for because no brood, no bees. All right, if you have no brood, continually no brood, no brood, either your queen is gone or dead, you have a problem, 
Okay, you have some kind of a problem and you need your brood to hatch because the life of a, a worker bee is something like 40 some odd days. Yeah. About uh, six to seven weeks. Right. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can place um, your second hive body on top, typically in about two to three weeks. That's not written in stone. So, you know, but if in doubt, if you're looking at your beehive and you say, well, they have one frame way over here to the left that's empty. So I'll wait. No, 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 no. Put the hive box on. When in doubt, always add the hive box because bees don't work left to right. Bees work up. They're not going to necessarily go out all the way to the last hive box. Our bees don't typically. 80% of them, I would say, don't. Not mm. usually. Maybe 60%. They they go in all kinds of squirrely ways, but don't wait for them to fill up the whole high. You know, don't say, no, well. It, yeah, it's not unusual yeah. if you have 10 frames for them to kind of ignore the first and the 10th, mm -hmm. uh, the ones on the extreme ends, in other words, against the walls of the hive box. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll develop those last. So if the other eight are filled up, then, you know, you right. may want to assume that they need more space. Right. Now, um, one six to eight frames of your second deep. Once, uh, where am I? One six to eight frames of your second deep have been drawn out. You can start placing your honey supers on. In an average area, this would occur late June, early July. It all depends on how everything goes. Now. <laughs> yeah, it depends where you're in the country. Yes. Don't think that you're just going to, you know, don't go by these. This is what was in the research. Everything is different. Uh, hopefully your, your beehives are going to take off. You're going to feed them or you're going to be in the middle of a honey flow. My personal recommendation, when in doubt, feed the bees. Because given a choice between all the flowers and trees out there, they are going to choose those over the sugar water that you're giving them. Yeah, and, and keep okay. in mind that in the north, uh, we're running probably a month behind the middle Atlantic and uh, two months behind the deep south. And you can sort of parallel that across the country. So... You, you have to be very aware of the climate where you are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everything. Like if you're in a suburban area um, and there aren't a lot of trees and things around, your timing may be different than somebody who's out in the wilderness. Kind of, well, we're not really in the wilderness, but like we are. Okay. Now, these are ours. When we picked them up, we picked up this set. These are nukes they're in the cardboard box they've been duct taped on the ends here they have little holes so the bees can breathe breathe but in each box are 10 or five frames and they're loaded which you'll see in a, in a second uh okay i got a question response. go ahead yeah um uh just me um it's easier to respond verbally on this one uh with ants, I think, yeah, we have issues with ants. It's not uncommon to uh, find ants laying eggs uh, inside the top cover. Um, we just scrape them out. Uh, if there's eggs embedded, sometimes in the little crack between the wood that's running horizontal and the wood that's runs vertical on the on the top, I just use. Um, uh, a, a burner, a flame, um, a propane torch. And if I know there's eggs in there, I'll just scorch it all around the edge there on the inside of the top cover if I see they've really gone to town. And then I just scrape the rest out on the ground. And um, that usually discourages them after a while. Um, I don't know if there's... Uh, anybody that has no ant problem. Yeah, that's true. That's okay. true. There's always something in there. Okay. 
This is Mr. B, and this is in a part of our B yard. Um, and we'll, this is when we were first starting. Um, as you see, um, there are only deeps, one level, deep boxes, okay? They're all set up. We have ours on concrete, concrete blocks. Oh, cement building, cement, cement blocks. blocks. Um, Hi to family. Hi to family. <laughs> I'm kind of sorry that we didn't put them on that it's something plastic or something or the, the newspaper with the mulch or something. But the new ones that we're getting this spring, we'll, we'll hopefully, we'll, I don't know if we'll do it or not. I'm sure. We'll be blitzing them. But this is in the beginning, okay? When uh, And that's Mr. B putting them on there. Okay. This is this is a video, but it was I took it as a, a shot. So just ignore the little arrow. That's your nuke. And if you count one, two, three, four, five, a lot of bees, okay, down here. So when you open up your nuke, this is what you typically get. And, um, you know, it's not, I mean, it's a lot of bees. <laughs> and one or two of those are typically, well, one is typically or two brood, you've got honey. So they're just jam packed in there, raring to go. Um, here is one of the frames out of the um, nuke. As uh, you can, see, I just love this. I don't know. I'm gonna put the cursor here. Look at this little bee. Wait for me. <laughs> hey, wait for me. Um, but he's picking up the um, the frame and he's just going to place it in the middle of the five frames of the deep okay any questions hi dragonfly hi dragonfly all right installing package bees in a langstroth hive now remember langstroth hives are the ones we're showing you uh the the deeps and supers the five frame and they're great because um universal size set up all of your equipment Okay, your hive stand. What you're gonna put, what you're gonna hive is gonna sit on. Okay, here's one down here. This this is all ready to go. Okay. Uh this is after they have them in, but this is this is ready to go. So you're gonna want a hive stand, what your hive will be set on, your bottom board, one deep hive body, 10 deep frames. This one, you don't need five frames in your deep. You're going to need 10 because you're not going to get any frames with that package of bees. Um, with foundation or comb, inner cover, outer cover, entrance reducer, feeder of your choice. Now, outside feeders, which are those bottle feeders we showed you, are often used for packaged bees because you can replace the food for your bees without disturbing them while they're getting settled. All right. And something else, remember your package bees are coming just a group of bees from wherever they go and, and get these bees and they're the people that sell them. The queen doesn't know the bees. The bees don't know the queen. You're not going to get any frames that have, um, and I'm not pushing nukes. I'm just telling you because I'm going to try a package myself. You're not going to have any frames of brood. You're not going to have any frames of honey. You're not going to have anything. So up here where it says, um, 10 frames with foundation or comb. If you're lucky enough to have some frames in there, you know, from previous hives, or maybe you can get some from somebody you know is a beekeeper that you trust, that doesn't have any diseases, um, that's what you want. Because you want them to hit the ground running. And it, as, you, as we went over in a previous session, it takes a tremendous amount of energy for these bees to draw, draw out comb. And they have to draw a comb before the queen can lay eggs. Okay, so if they're going to need a lot of food, you're going to have to be feeding these bees, and you'll see more about that in a minute. Um. Ju yes. Uh, <clears throat> just me. When you're asking, is it really the higher the better? Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, if you're talking about off the ground. They recommend 16 inches if you have skunks in your area to avoid them bothering your hive. Mm -hmm. um, but some people have them only three inches off the ground. Um, 
I, I'm assuming that's your question. Uh, the idea is you get away from the moisture because you've got a wooden boxes in almost all cases. You want to, you know, get them a little away from the ground. Um, it makes it uh, further distance for ants and everything else to crawl. So you want them, you want to give them some air circulation under the hive too. Right. And on that note, instead of wooden bottom, wooden bottom boards, we use screen bottom boards. So you may want to keep that in mind. Okay. First thing you're going to do, this is what package bees looks like. This is what a, a package of bees. Using your hive tool, we've discussed the hive tool, remember? Pry open the lid of the box. You're going to take the lid off the box, okay? Here are your bees, okay? Now take off that lid, yes? Uh, new day, we're going to talk about top bar hives. It's coming up. Uh, coming up. A yeah, bit. and we have no experience with it, so but we're going to go for it. Maybe. I don't know. Then you're going to gently tap your package bees against the ground or the top of the hive to dislodge them because they're going to be stuck together. What was that? The festo festooning? festooning. They're going to be festooned together. Okay. So you've pried them open and you're going to just shake them just a little bit to get them apart. Okay. Remove the feeder jar. Be sure to hold, there's going to be a tab here, right here. Be sure to hold onto the tab for the queen cage. Don't let it go. Your queen is going to be isolated in a little wooden cage. Well, actually, it's a wood cage with a, a screen on one side. Away from these bees. These bees don't know her, okay? You have to introduce this queen into the hive, okay? Gently remove the queen cage from the package of bees. Be sure to replace the lid. Now be sure to put this lid back over that hole so that your bees cannot escape. Otherwise, they're going to fly out of here. Okay? Um, next, let me go down here. Okay. I can't really see the, um, the chat. I'm looking at, hi, Donna. I saw Donna getting started, practical, two family uh, Mr. Rain, hi. And I saw Bob Homestead. I'm just taking a, a small break here. Uh, Biddy Boom, Dragonfly, Lady. Okay. So you see this right here? That's where your queen is. And you're going to see her a little bit down here because the bees are all around her, around that cage. And you're going to see a better picture of her. They're, they want to know who are you and why are you here? Plus they're homing in on her, um, Fermo, okay. like we discussed yesterday. Okay. Uh huh. Uh, to family. Um, why they're almost always white. Um, white reflects the heat, and in the summer, uh, you don't want heat buildup in the hives. The bees spend a lot of time actually fanning, uh, to create an air condition in air condition type environment. Um. Actually, if you had smoke by the front, you would see that air is coming in one side of the hive and going out the other side, uh, typically. So white is to reflect the sun. However, um, some people use soft pastels uh, that the bees can recognize uh, in their color range. Right. And keep in mind, we talked about making um, the hives different colors if your hives are close together to discourage drifting, meaning that bees coming back with pollen and whatnot don't go to the wrong hive. Okay, so you're going to open the deep hive box and take out three or four frames from one side of the hive. So this person has left in two, four, six right here. You're going to leave that open, okay? Now, that's your deep. These are all empty okay most likely your bees will be clustering on the queen cage brush them into the hive with your bee brush or feather so you can find and inspect the queen now they're all over the queen okay because they smell her pheromone they know there's a queen in there okay there she is and that's what a uh, queen cage looks like now while she's in there be sure to inspect your queen and be sure that she is alive and healthy. Be sure she is lively and dragging and not, not, oh my, not. And she's not dragging around or look to be lethargic. I'll straighten that out later. 
Okay. If your queen is not alive, close everything up and contact where you got the package from ASAP. And in the meantime, store your whole package, that whole box thing, in a cool, dark place. In here with the queen, you know, don't look at this and go, oh, we got three queens. Uh, she has attendants that are in here with her. Okay. Three or four. I forget the exact number. Some queen cages have two corks. You're going to have little holes, one down at this side, one up here. I believe they're top and bottom. One on each end. Be sure to only remove the candy cork end of the bee's cage. That candy cork is what the, the um, attendants in there are eating while they're in that cage. Okay? But you have to get one side out. All right? Here's the rubber band method of installing the queen. There are many methods. I saw at least three or four viable methods for installing the queen into this hive. I chose this one. Place a rubber band around one of your frames. You can see it right there, top to bottom, okay? There you go. And then you're gonna rubber band your queen cage right there, face up. Okay, or yeah, face up. So that's kind of dicey. We usually hang ours with a paper clip, but whatever you want to do, okay? Now, once she's there, you're going to push the queen cage down a few inches. Let me go back up and show you, like down here, a few inches from the top. So the bees have room to take care of her and feed her while she's in there. You can also install the cage vertically behind the rubber band. If you do this, be sure the candy end where the cork was removed is facing up. This way, in case the attendants die, they will not fall down against the hole and block the queen from getting out. Because the queen gets fed first. Okay. Replace the frame right here in the middle with the queen cage attached into the center of the hive. The queen should always be placed in the center of the hive. Always, always, even no matter how you're gonna put her in there, okay? Push another frame gently next to the queen cage to hold her. Now, shake some bees on top of your queen. These bees will stick their bottoms in the air to release the pheromone, which tells the other bees the queen is here. Remember that pheromone smells like bananas, so make sure you have never eaten bananas when you go to work with your bees. Okay, this person's very gently pushing the bees out. or They're coming out of that round hole in the, bo hole in the bottom. Don't worry if you don't get all of your bees out. The rest of the bees will find their way into the hive. Okay. Um, here. Adjust the frames to the correct bee spacing by pushing them together in the center of the hive. Try not to squish the bees. They have little, um, I don't know if you can see them here, little notches on the end of each frame. And that keeps the frames apart, which is just the right size for the bees to get in here. So now this person doesn't have gloves on. And that, I don't know. I don't recommend that at all. Okay. But he's putting in the queen. I'm pretty sure has to be in here. He's putting in the other empty frames. Okay. Leave the package in front of the hive. This is the front of the hive. Until nightfall. So any bees left in there can find their way home. They're going to go in there. Trust me, it happens. Feeding your packaged bees. Okay. Remember, your packaged bees have no food, honey, pollen, or bee bread and can starve if they are not fed. They probably will starve. Feeding a one-to-one -one syrup, which is one cup of sugar to one cup of water, will stimulate them to make wax which they need to build their home and to store their food. Now, there are all kinds of um, sugar water additives. You can get at various uh, sites on online for uh, bee supplies. And they, you know, they have different additives in them 
very friendly to bees that stimulate them to, you know, help them like vitamins and things like that. An outside feeder is great for newly installed bees because you do not, you do not need to disturb the hive to see if they need more food. Remember we showed you the different feeders. One goes on top, lays right across the top. One is on the outside. You want the outside one because all you have to do is slide, slide it right out a little bit and put a new jar of uh, water in there. Keep the feeder full and keep on feeding your bees one to one syrup until they have at least all 10 frames drawn out or as needed. Be careful not to feed during a nectar flow. Now, if you're a new beekeeper, and you don't know what a nectar flow is, which is when all the trees and things are out. Are you a little shaky on that? I, my personal advice is to keep feeding them. They don't need it. They won't take it. Okay. Um, remember, once you have all this set up, do not touch your high for at least a week, a full seven days. This may be hard to do, but it is very important. If you disturb your bees too many times, they may kill their queen instead of accepting her. They don't want to be messed with. Okay, <laughs> which is kind of hard for us because everybody wants to go, oh, let me go see what my bees are doing. But no, you can't, you can't bother them. Your bees will be flying everywhere. They are very confused. Soon you will see them flying outside in front of the hive doing orientation flights. This will go on for a few days and then they will calm down. They're orienting themselves to where they are. We can get more into that, but I want to keep moving because I want to make sure we get through all this material. Okay. One thing you can do is to look to see if any of your bees are carrying out dead bees, the undertaker bees. This is one of the first things you will see and it will help you know the colony is doing well. Everybody's falling into their routine. Every uh, bee in a hive has a purpose, okay? See if any of your bees are bringing in pollen on their legs, which they need to feed the brood. This is a good sign you will have a laying queen soon. Remember, when they're going into the entrance, you can sit there and you can, you know, you can, if they have that yellow, and we showed you that, they have the little pockets on their legs, their hind legs, that they store their um, pollen in as they go out and get it. One week later, and I want to make that small, check to see if your queen has been released from her cage. Very important, because if they've been going seven days without a queen and she's still in there, you may have a problem, okay? Go see what's going on with the queen. But before you know, gently smoke your bees at and under the cover. So you, and I would also smoke the entrance but at and over the cover, under the cover. Open up your hive, inspect the queen cage. See if your queen has been released. And the idea behind that is the bees on the outside, what is that other, they go through that other block thing and release her. But by that time, go ahead. Sure, what's your question? The other plug on the queen, they go, they. There's one on the sugar. Yeah. One at the mm -hmm. sugar side. They're going to yeah. eat through that to let her out. But by then, they're accustomed to her pheromone, and they won't kill her. You put a live queen in there, just throw her in there. They're going to kill her, okay? Open, even though they don't have a queen, all right? Open up your hive, inspect the queen cage. See if your queen has been released. If she has, remove the queen cage. If your queen has not been released, check to see that she is still alive and remove the cork from the non-candy end. Take it out. Got to help them a little. Be careful not to let the queen fly away. Put the cage back in, close up the hive, and check it again in a few days. All right, now the swarm. Now, this is not how we actually do our swarm, but I couldn't find anywhere in the research where somebody does what we do. Okay? <laughs> uh, I'll tell you first what we do. We just bring our swarm back and get out a, a, a hive and dump put it in there. And that's pretty much it because we're pretty sure we have the queen and we put her in first. And then we just, you know, we, we already have like some frames saved up. We keep frames that have honey or have, you know, pollen and all that stuff on it. So we're good to go. But the typical way is <laughs> what? Uh, Decide where you want to set 
up your swarm beehive. You know, back to basics, folks. You know, you got a swarm, where are you gonna put this hive? Remember, if you have other bees, you want this swarm away because they're coming out of somebody's gutter, rooftop. You don't know what's in there, okay? You don't know they could have diseases or they might not, but you don't want them in with the general population until, you know, you, you know how, they're, how they are, okay? Now, set up a hive box where you want your bees. You'll need a bottom board, a, a deep hive body, 10 frames and foundation, an inner cover, an outer cover, and a top hive feeder, or other means of feeding the bees syrup. Keep the entrance wide open, no entrance reducer. Now, I'm thinking back on the package bees. It didn't say what to do about the entrance reducer. Um. I when you would have, have a new it. package, you reduce the entrance yeah, I so would they're vulnerable it. and they don't get robbed. Yeah. Yeah. Always, you know, a uh, uh, new hive package, reduce it. So I'll have to put that in up there. Yeah, you want to feed them and reduce yeah. the entrance. Whoops. You, you sort of want to protect them. I don't believe I just did that. Okay. You do? Hit the wrong button. Okay. That's okay. I've done that. Now, here's what there. they're doing. Number three, they're placing a bed sheet or tarp flat in front of the new hive. Flat on the ground to the hive entrance. Some have a wooden plank or something suitable, like a piece of wood to act as a ramp to help the bees find the entrance to their new home. I just don't believe this. But anyway, this is where some frames of drawn out comb and or scent that attracts the bees in the hive may help. Take the box or the bucket or whatever you caught your swarm in and shake, pour the bees onto the bed sheet as close as the entrance as possible. Some of the bees will immediately begin fanning an orientation scent at the entrance and the rest will scramble right into the hive. I have never seen that. I don't know if I would try it. Uh, yes, question? Um, Donna, um, the queen does not go on a flight and return to her new hive if you purchased it because she's already been mated. The only time the queen takes that flight, basically the only time she leaves the hive, mm -hmm. um, excluding a swarm, which is different, the only time she leaves the hive is when she's brand new and takes her mating flight to be mated so she can lay eggs for the remainder of her lifetime. So that's a one, usually a one time. It can be a couple of days, but usually it's a one time flight. So when you buy something, she's already supposed to be mated and laying eggs. Right. Okay. So then after a week here, you're going to, uh, uh, da -da 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 -da. after we check your swarm. Oh no, here we go. A swarm of bees once in their new home will usually draw a comb quickly because they arrive loaded with honey. Remember before bees swarm, they eat up a lot of honey and they get the queen real fat. Okay. You should feed them syrup using the, using the top high feeder to stimulate wax production. You may not have to feed your bees if the nectar flows are heavy. Nectar flows again, tons of things blooming out there and not just necessarily flowers, okay? After a week, check your swarm hive to see how your bees are doing. Look for brood and if you see some, you know that your queen is a good one and has taken to laying. If you don't see brood, I don't know. Uh, you might see Remember we showed you the queen cells, which means the something's happened to her. The bees don't like her. They're going to get a new queen. Leave those alone, okay? Also, make a note of how frames of foundation have been drawn into comb. The more, the better. If you do not see brew, try to locate the queen or notice if there is a queen cell. It may be time to begin feeding your bees if you haven't been doing so. This is where it gets into um, your gut feeling. What what do you think? Should you feed them? Should you not feed them? Are they going to be okay? You know, yes or no. Um, now, keep in mind, a swarm has advantages over packaged bees and that they came there loaded with honey, okay? The downside is, is that uh, they also, unless you give them drawn-out comb, um, they don't have any. Okay, and they have to start from the beginning also. All right, this is the site where I got a lot of this information from. 
in case you want to go there and look. Now, the infamous top bar hive. How to install packaged bees in a top bar hive. Okay. Of course, you're going to only install packaged bees in a top bar hive. Blech. Top bar, top bar hive. Okay. Right? Okay. Top bar hive body. You're going to need one of those. I didn't even put that there. Okay. Okay. Let me, I should. I'm going to put what you need. Okay, you're going to need, because it's very similar to package to doing the package. You're going to need top bars with comb guides, like an angled top bars, like an angled top bars, popsicle sticks, or wax starter strips. You should have enough top bars so they completely cover your hive. A follower board, outer cover. This will vary on the style of your top bar hive. And could be anything from a piece of plywood to a telescoping or garbled cover. Have you seen Grandpa's place in there in the chat? No. Okay. He's our expert on top bar hives. In fact, he just is building um, bee traps to catch them. Okay. Yes. Another. Okay. Um, uh, Donna, you're not in trouble. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Donna, you're not in trouble. Just for general commentary, any queen that you purchase whether in a package or a nuke or separately should already be mated it just ain't fair <laughs> for them to ask you to take care of that uh so um That's yeah funny. and you can ask now new day um yeah i agree with kelly um should you fence in your hives um uh. Only if you have problems, and generally that problem is a black bear. If you have bears in your area, you're going to have to put up an electric fence and maintain it. Or something. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah. right, or a guard tower or something. But <laughs> otherwise, uh, generally, there's Grandpa's the animals. Yeah. <laughs> otherwise, generally, we haven't found animals too much of a problem, excluding one mm -hmm. hive we knocked over and we don't know what happened. Okay. But grandpa's place is here. Okay. Yeah. You will also need a hive tool, a lit smoker. Folks, make sure your smoker is lit. Smoker fuel and lighter, a bee brush or feather, bee suit veil, paper clip, duct tape, a pocket knife. And grandpa's hive, you're going to have to come in with us maybe next week. Everything else for installing bees in a top bar, bleh, top bar hive is the same as packaged bees in a frame, like the time of day. Okay. Grandpa's place is, is the expert. Here's what a top bar hive looks like. If you lift these up, and we showed you one week, you're going to have, like, they're empty, but you're going to have, like, pure, like, honeycomb on there with honey. Okay? Um, so same thing. When you install bees into your top bar hive, give them only about 10 bars of empty space at first. I don't know how many are in here. One, two, three, four. Oh, yeah. They're big. This one's huge. Okay. Ten at first. This is, this, and, and from what I read, they recommend a three pound package. Oh, bread knife. Oh, Grandpa's Place. I love you. You no know bread knife is a two for a top bar. Could be. Um, uh, three pounds of bees, at least. Don't get a little one pound of bees. Or I don't even know if they sell those. Okay. You're going to need three pounds of bees. There goes Snoopy. Okay. For a top bar hive. When you install bees into your top bar hive, give them only about 10 bars of empty space at first. This is a big enough space for them to feel com comfortable, but is not too large for them to feel manageable. Place your follower board at the end of the 10 bars to make their hive smaller. As your bees build out the comb, you will need to move the follower board back a few bars at a time and give them more space to build. Remove a few more bars to open up the hive, leaving the queen in place. If you are lucky enough to have comb with stores to feed the bees, be sure this comb is placed into the hive on the bar or bars next to the queen cage. Okay, whatever you have, whatever kind of comb you have, food and whatnot, put it next to that queen, okay? When you put the bars back into the hive, it is a great idea to place the bar with the queen between two combs of something, if you have them, 
or put the queen between them, like drawing out honey or something. If you are going to use a feeder to feed your bees, you will wait to install it later. Why, I don't know. Here is uh, a picture of a top bar hive queen cage in place. There's the queen cage. The bees are all down here, okay? Um, hi, high top. See the, the here go the bees down to the queen top bar hive. What your top bar hive will look like. These are separate, these are separated. I'll separate. Well, if I do it now, maybe the picture will move. Bees going down to queen in the top bar hive. There they go. She's right here. Okay. Uh now here are the bees. Here's your other top bars. They're going down into the bottom here. I don't know how they get out of here. I'll be honest, I didn't see an entrance on any of these top bar hives. They're, I believe they're usually at one end or the other. Grandpas, which, you're going to have to come on here with us. Which, one end or the other? Yeah. Right. Here's what they look like. Oh, that's cute. Like somewhere, right here? Yeah, somewhere. This, on folks, is a top bar hive. Now, pluses and minuses. Uh, you're going to get your honeycomb with honey, and a lot of people like that. This is the cover. Well, I wonder why this is up here, rain? Or like maybe the same as the top of a box. With mm -hmm. a stick to hold it down. And there's your top bar. And here you shake them on there and they're going down in there. Now, I am going to do a little bit more research. 50 50. So I'll put it in the middle. Thanks, uh, middle. Thanks. Um, yeah, they have to be Donna S. They got to be fertilized. Okay. I mean, that's part of what you're paying for our queen, maybe around 30 bucks with shipping. I don't know. Okay. Now, it's time for Simply 7, so we are going to leave. However, I'm going to go more into the top bars. Any, can you just put a yes in the chat in case you're going to, um, if you're going to, um, yes. And there's Jerome B. Farm and Grandpa's Place. Who else is it? Bee experts in the house, in the house. Okay. And Jerome, those bees look good. I left a couple of messages. They look just great compared to what our bees look like up here <laughs> right now. Yeah. Um, uh, Donna, don't feel bad oh, that you heavens. didn't know about the queens. No, no, no. In reality, how would you know? How would you know? Only I've only seen one picture of somebody who captured right. on film a queen in her mating flight. Now, there's probably others. Right. Nobody yeah. knows. Okay. You're thinking nature. Hi, uh, Heidi. Didn't see you either. Okay. We're going to have to get going, but I, I do want to tell you this. We got, we're getting documentation in from our bee club about New York. Was it all of New York or just Western? Oh, all New York. Last, last winter, 50% of the hives were wiped out by winter. This week, <laughs> if we keep going, we're going to be at 50%. Okay. Um, you have okay all right grandpa's place because you're gonna have would you join us i hope one one wednesday and you know we have to get these going because they seem a little simpler and they look a little less expensive top bars uh, i don't know because you're not there well the, the equipment doesn't is not quite as involved right you're not doing you know as, Boxes. Supers and this and that and yada. And he says he uses a butter knife. He says, yeah. Yes, thank you, Grandpa's Place. But anyway, 50%. Now, this winter was um, colder. And so, I don't know, folks. That's why we put in a hefty order for the spring. Because this is our year to expand. And also, we figure, you know, a lot of people are going to be wiped out. Um, so, but I'm going to, we're going to go over this. The top bar is a little bit more. I want to have more clear pictures for you and for myself. Um, okay. So that's it for now. We're going to go off here so that Simply 7 is coming on. And um, thank you very much. And like I said, Jerome, your hives look great. Jerome's hives look great. Yep. Don't they? I mean, they're just yep. great, Jerome. I don't know why you think you're going to lose them. I don't think so. As long as they can fly, let them go. And we have to get one of those bees he has. I forgot the name. I had it written down. One of those queens he has. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Remember, this is going to stay up. Um, Whatever's edited is edited. This is the best I'm going to do. Yeah. And uh, if you want a copy, 
let me know. I haven't checked the email yet. I'll get to it because right now we're just running to the bee yard every day trying to see what's going on. We should say bye. Yeah. Let me okay. go back over. Bye. Whoops. Wait, wait, wait. There we are. Yeah. Hi. Bye. bye. Okay. Bye, everybody. We'll see you next week. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Take care.